Hey guys, welcome to the Fat Ninja Studios channel. I'm your host, Raging Antibody, and with me are... Andrew. Jason. Kelly. We just got back from seeing the sequel to 2017's It Chapter 1, so let's jump right in. How you guys doing? Okay. Yeah? Okay. What, let's just start off with something simple. What did you think? I really liked it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah? I think I was a bit serious the whole time. I feel my eyebrows like thinking really hard while it was going. I don't know what it was. Hmm? Well, Honestly, the only part that I remember jumping was the Pomeranian. Really? The little doggy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the dog was cute though. I didn't expect him to be evil. Well, I mean, I did expect him to be evil, but I thought it was just going to turn into a clown or something. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no. Uh, personally, uh, I was telling Andrew this before we left the, the theater, but I thought Pennywise was a little goofy. Uh, the film itself was, was pretty good. Uh, it, it had a, a weird flow. Like, it, 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 it was going, and then it slowed, and then it was going, and then it slowed again. You know, and then the ending just went, you know, and then it slowed again at the very, very end to do the little sad stuff. So, it, was, it wasn't as smooth, I think, as the first one was. But, uh, you know, I liked it still. I mean, I, if, if I had to pick between the two, I would like, I think, part one better than part two. But that's, that's my personal I think part of the difference was that the, the second one was more about each individual adult, whereas in the first one it was about the whole group of children. Okay. And I think that was part of why you, you feel it was more choppy because they were jumping back between several solo stories as opposed to them all having the same story. Exactly, and it kind of broke the flow, right? Just yeah. a little bit, because it yeah. felt like starting a new chapter of a book every time mm -hmm. a new character came on the screen, which, uh, I don't know, like, it just kind of threw me off a little bit while I was watching. Um, any other thoughts? I like that they incorporated a lot of the stuff from the first movie into the second one, like yeah. the doors. Like all the, the three doors, yeah. Uh, which door would you have picked? I would have, I would have just gone with, uh, I thought they were going to learn the first time they're just gonna go with really scary like right away they did they did but i don't know i couldn't remember that that's the order that they went in the first one no, no they went to exactly. not very scary at all okay so that's and what i remembered scary, i yeah. thought that they were gonna change like their decision and learn from their last mistake or whatever but i couldn't remember uh, like the outcome i i liked the outcome of like the fact that it was still like not what they would have expected anyways now I'm curious about what's in the third door, like the yeah, middle door, scary. right? Yeah. We, now we saw the first door, we saw the last door. I think I would have went with the center door just because he's going to trick you on the, the not scary one, but he expects you to know that he's going to trick you, so you go to the opposite. Mm -hmm. I think the safest one would be the one that... Honestly, that that whatever that worm tentacle thing couldn't reach them. It's kind of like the yeah, T-Rex stuck in the hole. playing with mm -hmm. them. I mean, before when he tried to grab them through there, he couldn't, and then he just kept stretching his arm. I think you could have kept stretching his arm. I think oh. it was just. I was going to say, otherwise, I'm pretty sure they could have just stood there, turned around, and said, What are you going to do now? You know, yeah. apparently your reach isn't I think long he was enough. He was just tricking them to open the doors because he was playing with them. That's true. He was a little bit more more uh, childlike yeah. in this movie, yeah, right? Yeah, I noticed playful. that. It was, it was toying with them a lot more than it did in the first one. Which isn't really scary. <laughs> like, it kind of. I mean, it really, like I said before, feels they like each a, their own separate. Right. Quest in this one, and I feel like it could have killed each one separately. The way they did it kind of reminds me of uh, Freddy Krueger from the mm -hmm. night, from, like the later Nightmare movies and stuff yeah. like that, where he's just kind of having fun mm -hmm. with them instead of like actually. Which is a Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, well, I guess the next question would be: the Were you guys scared at all throughout the film? Like, did there certain anybody? Like, I wouldn't say scared. I mean, it was more like jump moments. I didn't really jump, but kind of, you know, you can feel it in the back of your neck. I absolutely loved the the little girl under the bleachers part. That was the only part where I was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And you know what I mean? Because you, like, the girl, like, when she got down there, right, she's all like, she's like, yeah, you're, you're, why are you hiding in the dark? You're scary. Fuck this. I'm out, right? Yeah. And, just, <laughs> and then, attitude. Right? And then she was, and then he's all crying and stuff like that. You know, um, which reminds me too about the ending. Uh, you almost feel sorry for him, right? When he melted into a little puddle, Pennywise, yeah. right? Like, 
You kind of like. I mean, yeah, he's a monster. He's evil, whatever. But you kind of feel like because he doesn't really. Yeah, he's pathetic. Exactly. He, he's he's. It's almost like he's a child. Yeah, he might be billions of years old, but he's never. I mean, what we don't have a sense of scale for his. his I guess species is the. Well, best word for it. I have a theory about the about the end of the life. film, which I want to get to it. Oh, well, we know he still is an adolescent. We don't know what his, right. his lifespan is. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a theory about the ending, so I'm, I'll get back to that okay. one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, any... Were you scared? Well, I mean, yeah, uh, it did bring up, like, a lot of, like, real-life topics, I guess. Like, when, um, like, really, like, the whole thing with, with their husband. That, like really I was, that when was he clocked scary, her in the like face, I was yeah. like, damn. Like, yeah. That was, that's what had me But like, the, crazy. when she smashed that, what was, what did she smash up? Was that a vase or? I think it was a yeah. vase or something. But it, it instantly, I thought of the, the toilet seat when she did it to her dad. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh, and I heard you scream, yeah, you know, yeah. like, it was, uh. Triumphant moment. Because later on in the movie, I was thinking, like, he really punched her in the right. face. Like, she didn't have a black Close. eye or anything. They put, like, bass yeah. on the sound effect, yeah. too, because yeah. it was like, boom! Yeah. Later, when she was at the hotel, I was thinking, I'm surprised she didn't have a black eye. Right. From that. That's right. They, the only uh, right. markings that she seemed to have was yeah, where he grabbed her on the arm, arm right? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they so showed that when she put her arm around Ben. She, they were walking mm-hmm. down the street together. She had, the, she had like, two lines in the circle or something. How about you? Were you scared? Mm, I was really grossed out a couple times. Like, <laughs> like, like or I was like was disturbed. That's what I was talking about before. I was like, mm-hmm. felt like I was so serious. Like my, I could feel my eyebrows just like, like, like what's mm-hmm. that? Like, oh yeah, there was a, there was a lot of gross moments. Mm-hmm. I, I can't do vomit. I'm not a big fan of vomit. <laughs> so. Uh, that was pretty gross. And then the, the tonguing of the, the mom. Yeah. That was, like, that, <laughs> that was a little that much. Too. I was like, oh, no, come on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's like getting made out with by, like, Gene Simmons or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> just not. But, uh, hey, you're, like, fearless, huh? Huh? You. Just stone. Just fearless, right? No, no fear. Right now, or like during the movie? Yeah, during the movie, you were just. Um. You were just in there, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Normally, I fall asleep. I can't even keep my attention span to think that, like. <laughs> that was. Um, I felt like I was studying the movie the whole time. Like, like, or almost just like reading it. Like, I, I kept asking myself, like, I don't remember this in the book. Because it was one of my favorite sleeping movie books that I ever had. I didn't remember. So it also made it interesting to me, too, like, how they were going to end it. I remembered vaguely, like, what was going to happen or what was supposed to happen. But, um, yeah, that was about it. Yeah. Did anybody else read the book? No. No. That right, was one of the what I was going to ask if anybody spotted any actual book mm. cameo or, like, references directly from the book and stuff. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, um, what Bill says, you know, it's like a beat, beat the devil in the fight, right? Um, the, what I liked, uh, that is from the book, was the way they portrayed the deadlights, that they were writhing, that, that they felt, they weren't just orbs, they were actually moving, and they, it looked like it had fur, whatever, on the edges of it, like it was fuzzy, you know what I mean? And that is, that is definitely out of the book, that he is this worm-like, right, like a caterpillar almost, but made out of orange light and stuff like that, but it's it's always moving in a, at least a, a or, or boros, right? Um, but uh, I, I have to watch it one more time. I was still in, like, like ooh, spectacle mode, right? Um, so I didn't really, really try to, like, pick up on a lot of the references and stuff like that, but uh, mostly the references I got were to the first movie. Um, I feel like the ending of the film did the book justice in a sense but it didn't f- it felt um, the the ritual chud in the film felt like a red herring not just because Mike you know lied about it or whatever and that it didn't work for them because it sort of did right they they because they still you end up kind of using it to make him small right and stuff like that, but it wasn't, 
it wasn't as special as it was in the book. You know, in the book they make it like this, this, this spiritual awakening when they do the smoke hole thing and stuff like that. You know, granted, you know, whatever he had a vision, he saw the meteor crash and, and all that after he, uh, drank whatever, the roots. drank the roots, right? Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it just, it was lacking the what I what I expected from the book and stuff like that. Granted, it was a hell of a lot better than the ending. <laughs> from the 1990 film, you know, because in the 1990 film, I mean, but I would have, I would have actually liked to see that, because the only person who, who did anything was pretty much Richie, he ripped off that thing, uh, ripped off his arm, right, yeah. and, and then Mike did the heart thing, right, but like, in the book, they tear it apart, like, okay. they, they rip it apart, like, they're, they're pissed, right, uh, Eddie does die in the book, so that's pretty book yeah. accurate, yeah, um, right, Oh my god, that is also my other favorite scene. When Richie starts talking shit and then he just flashes the deadlights and Richie just stops. Like he just becomes catatonic, right? His face, like Bill Hader deserves some sort of recognition for what he did in this film because mm. that was amazing how he just dead dropped his face, you know? Um, and the way they did it, like how it's shining through the back of his head and, how it, yeah. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, that was that was pretty cool. I, mean, I, I There were some visuals in there that were that were pretty amazing. Um, other visuals looked a little cheap, like, uh, grandma, long titties, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, she was a little goobery looking, you know? Like, I, I, she, I felt like, uh, the same thing happened with the, the painting woman in the first one. But, um, I don't know. What about you? You guys, uh, have any particular scenes? You mentioned the, the bike, and again, I haven't read the book, but I kind of liked in the 90s that uh, Mike had kept the bike the whole time, and then in that one, we had the flashback to when they, as kids, ran away from the bike, you know, rode away on the bike, rather, uh, from the monster. The stand, uh, I'm right? I was going to say, yeah, yeah, it wasn't really Pennywise at that point, I don't think. No, in the book, it is, it, they're running. Like, Stan, uh, they're, I want to say it's the, it's the mummy. Yeah, like, like I was saying, I thought no, it was No, no, it's, 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 I don't think it's, it's the bird. Like, I, I'm not quite sure what which okay. one, which shape well, he takes. I thought yeah. it was a nice bonding moment for Mike and, uh, and Bill. Bill in the in the '90 movie, he had kept his bike this whole time for him, and I mean, you just kind of didn't have that in it. I mean, you had a nice cameo, obviously. You had the the joke, where I, I saw it coming. He's like, "You have so much money because you're a successful writer." I was like, "Oh God, how many hundreds of dollars are you going to charge him?" Right. Uh, oh, I love the. I as soon as I heard his voice, I turned to Kelly and I was like, "That's Stephen." Like I, I, cause I've watched so many interviews with him and everything. Like I recognize his voice when he says, yeah. "Hey," you know. I was like, "Oh my God, that's King." Yeah, I didn't know what it came so much. It was yeah. Stephen King. As soon too. as I saw it, I, it was great. Like he, uh, uh, he looks old, but he he's still very King-like, you know. And like he's still. Um, yeah, sorry. Let me know. Oh, sorry. Like I said, then you didn't really have that bonding moment. You know, no, I feel you. Between the two of them. Because the whole idea was them to be re-establishing uh, this bond they had with children that they, they kind of forgot about. So, I kind of missed that a little bit. And again, I haven't read the books, so I don't know if he bought it or if he, someone kept it for a long time or what. But, you know. I'll have something. to loan you the book so you can find yeah, out. Yes. <laughs> How about you? Favorite scene? Oh, something okay. that just that just grabbed you where you're like, man, I want to see that again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I kind of like that Chinese restaurant when everything started coming out, like the fortune cookies and everything. The little that little baby, baby thing. Yeah, oh. the baby insect, yeah, it just like screeches. That's so cool. But they had, they had the baby, they had the eyeball, they and had the that bat, bat wing. Thing. That was it, right? No, there was one more. There were four. It was like a baby bird. Oh, that's right, yeah, the baby bird. Yeah, the baby bird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they didn't do like a little spider one. Yes. Yeah. I mean, in the, the, the 90s one, they had like a little lobster claw thing, I remember. Oh. Um, I, I want to say I mean, they're all book, it's, his, it's two of his fingers that come out. With like the like he has yeah. technically his real hand is like just three fingers like Ninja Turtle style right yeah. two long fingers and a, a thumb uh, and that's what comes out of the fortune cookie and they kind of did something similar but whatever but there is a spider definitely there's a big ass nasty spider with like a thousand eyes or some shit on its head. 
comes out of it. Perfect. So you like that, huh? Yeah. You're a bug person. <laughs> How about you? Favorite scene? I'll probably get a copy soon and then uh, you can watch it again. I like the, like, the bits of humor and everything. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like that about the first one too. That's why I was looking forward to it. The dynamic between Richie and Eddie oh, yeah. is yeah, so good. Yeah. yeah. Like, those, first of all, those actors look exactly like the younger versions of themselves, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they, they, they got yeah. the perfect actors to play the adults. Yeah. And, but yeah, that chemistry was right there between those two. Mm -hmm. More so than, than almost any, like, to be honest, the two that felt the most out of place for me was Bill himself. Like, not that James McAvoy is a, a good actor, but he just didn't really feel like that's what Bill would grow into, you know? I mean, maybe that's the point or something, but... Um, and the other one was Ben. He was kind of the adult version of Ben was kind of bland, you know. Didn't like, really give him as much to do. So that's no, you. Yeah, he. He. I mean, he just I, kind of I, 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 I had to. He mentioned that uh, Bill did all these nice things. Like, you know, Bill wrote me this poem and then you see him like, right. on sulking. That was kind of his character. I had to have the feels during the scene where you know he's in the school when he's little Ben, you know, young Ben. And shit, and she's like, I couldn't kiss a fat boy like you oh. and shit. I felt it, bro. I felt it. I was like, oh man, that is that is memories right there. But uh, otherwise, yeah, no, they didn't really. He wasn't. I mean, they gave Mike more to do this time around, which is oh, yeah. they didn't do sh nothing with him in the first in the first yeah, movie. Yeah. Mike Mike was just the token black guy in the movie, yeah. you know. And uh, this time he was actually in the film, you know. Even though, and I like how. He was very neurotic, very, very, very like, because uh, uh, he had he had lived with the memories, the right? Yeah, he never forgot. So he he it's not that he mastered his fear; he was trying to control it, right. you know. And the other ones didn't understand. Like they, they like you said after or after the the, the uh, restaurant scene, right? They all panicked and stuff like that. You know, um, I don't know, but uh, I liked I liked Mike's character. But but as far as like, Bill and Ben, I think were the were the weakest of the characters in the movie uh, this time around. Definitely see the Bill and Ben. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I had thought, and, like when I was watching the first one, you know, uh, and Bowers takes the dive down that that well, uh, I was like, man, how is he gonna come back? In the movie? And I like how they kind of gave you a little story about how how he washed out and they walked back to his dad's house and they arrested him because. I was really concerned he wasn't coming back. I was like, well, how are they going to do that then? You know, I was almost curious because he didn't seem to be injured at all. No broken arms or anything. No, he no, smacked his he, way yeah, on the way down. Around. So did Pen you, you think, like, I mean, they didn't show it in the movie, obviously, but do you think like, Pennywise may have caught him and then lowered him in the water and then just let him float out? Yeah. yeah. You know, like, caught like him in the deadlight so he would, like, shoo, you yeah, know. And yeah, then. I was wondering about it because, like I said, I was like, he's supposed to be back in the second one and I just didn't see it. It looked like he died, you know. Right. So that, that was there. I also like that uh, immediately when I chose him, I, I thought to myself, man, he still has a mullet. And later they make fun of him for still having a mullet. <laughs> that scene when he washes out, though, and all those children, mm -hmm. those body parts, oh, that, that half eaten leg with just like a yeah. shoe barely hanging on it. Shums, oh, yeah. that's creepy. Um, yeah, no, like. Uh, there was a there was a lot of good uh, non CG in there, mm -hmm. like practical effects and stuff like that. Um, I really, uh, I actually really enjoyed the the Pennywise spider because that was just a giant puppet, right, in the background, where he's just standing there and they have the light shining through. The only CG on there, uh, what you could tell was the was the the lights, yeah, the head and stuff. But the rest of it was just a giant backdrop puppet, you know, and it was really cool because you could see it. It's just hanging there. And stuff like that, and I was like, "That's really well done." Versus, you know, like I said before, long titties and and uh, yeah. and uh, even the head 
the Stan's head coming out, you know, the, the, the thing reference, right? Um, it was cool at first, uh, but um, then when it had the mouth suddenly with the teeth, that's when it started to look fake. <laughs> You know, when they just did the legs part and it was just walking around and it was just Stan's face, it looked it looked realistic, right? But then when it started biting and, and, and drooling, that, that you could tell it was animated on and it just didn't it just didn't look right, you know. Um let's see what else we got here. So what part didn't you like? What was like what do you think the part of the movie that you're like that could have cut that out, that would have been fine. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we can come back to you. Is, yeah. We can skip down. We had no idea. Huh? You? I could have done without Ben being buried alive in sand because what the what did that have to do with anything? I mean, I understand oh. that it was supposed to, there was going to be some sort of connection where Beverly saves him, right? Yeah. But. What did what did burying right. by sand have to do with it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it should have been a little bit more. Like, if it would have been like she's in the bathroom with the blood and he's stuck in that locker, would have made sense to me because of the flashback scene that we had earlier in the film, right? But I think part of it was was he ever? That he was really proud that he made that clubhouse for him and he made it all sturdy. And you see later in it with more flashbacks where he's like reinforcing it with more nails. I don't know. I guess that was just kind of like symbolic of his friendship collapsing with them because he did that all for his friends like okay. you know if he was just him he wouldn't have done that so I don't know I kind of felt like it was going to fall apart like as soon as he was put in there I was like he put so much effort into building that I bet his nightmare is going to fall apart okay just what I thought no no I feel that it makes a little bit more sense yeah. but still to me I think that's one of the weakest scenes that and um uh Uh, the uh, the escape scene for Henry Bowers and from the book he like coons the, the, the big orderly guy who's always like throwing him around like you know whatever yeah. um, he has a fear of dogs right yeah. and uh, Pennywise turns into a half dog yeah. half man thing and then like you know, yeah. eats the guy right and stuff like that they just Henry just kind of stabbed him yeah. and I thought uh, I think and I mean, like Henry I think Bowers it's supposed to be like, make it look more realistic to the people who observe, like, oh, the guy escaped, he somehow had a shiver or something. But at the same time, like, that doesn't really fly because Pennywise manipulates everything. Uh, so and you had anyway. zombie Hockstetter driving the car, yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. So, it just, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like they, because they, cause he was in the book, they just threw Henry Bowers into the movie. Yeah. You know, they didn't really... He was also a little confused. He got stabbed pretty good in his chest, and then he jumped out a second story window, right. and pulled out the knife, and I'm like, is that really supposed to be him, or is that Pennywise? And then he, when he was walking away to get in the car, I was like, that was supposed to be him. Yeah, because Hawkstetter is Pen or Pennywise is pretending to be Hawkstetter. Hawkstetter, yeah, exactly. So. Which I'm surprised that they didn't show the other bullies. Um, you know, because like, there was a deleted scene in the original, uh, part one, uh, where it shows that he also after he killed his dad, he kills uh, Belch and Victor Chris, right? The blonde kid and the, the, the fat dude, right? Um, before taking uh, Belch's car, right? That's how he gets the transit. Um, I was surprised that they didn't, because Hockstetter died pretty early on, mm -hmm. and they never really built a relationship between Patrick and uh, and Henry Bowers, not the way they do in the book. Like in the book, there's this whole like mutual masturbation thing and and some other crazy shit that happens, right? Uh, which there's none of that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, Patrick Hockster dies when they're chasing Ben, like right yeah. right near the beginning of the film, right? So, I mean, it's cool that they brought him back and they showed you know what his corpse looked like and stuff like that. Great, but I would have loved to see the other bullies in the car with them or yeah. something like that. That would have been cool, like the gang rides yeah, again, exactly. you know. Uh, would have been like a little bit of throwback uh, to an old another King book. Uh, sometimes they come back. Uh, so, um, but yeah. So, anybody think of another scene that they they're like, uh, no, no. Okay, we can move on. Um, what do we got? All right, here's a good one. Let's get ready. 
if Pennywise were real, and he was coming after you, what would he use as your fear, as a, both as a kid and then as an adult? Right. Um, I already know, like, what my actual fear is, but, like... Go for it. I, I, don't, I don't know. How would he... I don't remember what I was afraid of when I was... Oh, I was afraid of the dark when I was a kid. And as an adult, I was afraid of being a part of something that's terrible and not realizing it. Does that make any sense? Like... So, in essence, like, uh, Beverly's relationship... Right, uh, it's like a, it's the word I said, Stockholm syndrome. Right, where you're, yeah. you, you're, you're, you're involved because you think you should be or whatever and stuff like that, but it's actually really good the situation like that. Okay, so Pennywise will turn into what, like an abusive drunk. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to picture it, like, like. The dark one, though, that's cool because that's also what Georgie's afraid of in the book. Uh, that's why, like, when he goes on the, the steps and he has just the things he thinks he sees in the dark, you know, Pennywise would have to feel it. Aww. Sucks. <laughs> what are you? No idea. What, what were you afraid of as a kid? <laughs> you don't know? No. As an adult, there's somebody stealing your Legos? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would make me scared. That made me angry. <laughs> what, what about a giant Lego man trying to kill you? Like uh, Richie had uh, <laughs> the giant Paul Bunyan. Uh, not personally. No? Uh, How about you? My childhood here was so dark too. So. Ooh, you guys have the same boat. <laughs> what about as an adult? Nothing? You guys are like all fearless now? Yeah. For me it'd be easy. As a as a kid, I was afraid of drowning. But I loved going to the ocean. I loved going to the swimming pool and stuff like that. I could I would practice holding my breath, so on and so forth. Um, but uh, one time uh, I was playing out in high tide on the beach. And I was playing on the reefs. And then I was playing out there so long, low tide set in, I got stuck on the reef. And, you know, it was all sharp, right, and stuff, trying to get back. And, and I remember uh, in the scuba class and stuff, talking about getting swept out under there and stuff like that. I was, I was so afraid that my grandpa had to come out to the ocean to get me and bring me back because I thought I was going to drown out there. Like, it was, it was scary. Uh, so... Anything with water drowning me in a in a in a in a in a room in my house or something like that that would have that would have freaked me out as a kid. As an adult, my feel my fears are a little bit more metaphysical, right? Yeah. More more emotional. Yeah, something yeah. mentioned. But that, uh, that's why he goes after kids. It would, their fears are more tangible. It would still be something like if it was for a, like a painful, painful death. That is something that bothers me. I don't want to die in a <coughs> in a crazy painful way. I don't even want. I don't want to suffocate. I don't want to burn to death. I don't want to die with like being crushed where I'm still like alive, but like I can feel my body is like, you know, destroyed. You know, things like that. That. So if Pennywise would like trap me somewhere and start crushing me, you know, like like that, like this, you know, you've seen uh, I think it was like Saw Five or whatever, where the dude is like stuck between the windows and it crushes him and shit like that. You watch his arms split open and shit, like something like that. I mean. Uh, if I felt him doing it like where where Bill was trapped in the mirror <laughs> thing, and then it was, he was squeezing himself through there, yeah, no, I'd be claustrophobic as hell. I would, nope, like that would, I would freak out. I, that would scare the hell out of me, and Pennywise would have it. Right there, that would be, that would be my <coughs> my top fear. But uh, so don't get any ideas. You know, a single one of you, will never trap me somewhere. <laughs> um, who do you think was the superior Pennywise, Tim Curry or Bill Skarsgård? I like this one better. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think Bill is a lot more scary. his eyes, like, scary. look back on his head and stuff, like, he, yeah, he, he looks, he looks yeah. or reminds me of, like, a demon. Like, <laughs> when he's, like, the kind of the first one, he's more like a ghost, like a re disappearing and reappearing and like, popping up, like, I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, he, yeah, he creeps me out more in the second one, I think. Even though, like, as an adult, 
I don't think I'd be able to handle that as a kid. If I saw the second light, then I'd probably freak out more. You know, he, uh, he has a real lazy eye in real life. Really? That's why his eye rolls out there. Machete was just like, just do it. Just let it go. <laughs> let it and Bill would just be like, relax his face. And then his eye would start to roll apart. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then the drool is also real. When he drools and stuff like that, he would uh, he would eat a piece of sour candy beforehand and then just let it run. <laughs> right about right. So, what do you think? Curry or, pen or Star's Guard? Probably this one. Yeah, he likes Star's Guard? Any reason why in particular? Well, because he was like kind of scary, but then also goofy at the same time though. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody here have an actual fear of clowns? I used to when I was younger. Oh, so there's but, another thing that could come. Yeah, but I don't think it's irrational. <laughs> 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 you said yeah. Scars Guard? Any reason why? He's just more creepy. I think he's also like more violent. Like his mouth would actually turn into a bunch of sharp teeth. His okay, jaw would like kind of unhook, and he'd have that giant mouth, you know. I guess I'm gonna be the odd man out. And say, yeah. I mean, it depends. I like them both. Don't Curry get me was wrong. more bright. He was more goofy. It was more of a surprise than a monster. What I liked. This guy kind of looked like a monster to begin with. Well, what I always liked about Curry's portrayal was, first of all, his line delivery. He seemed angry. He seemed like violent when he delivered his lines they were very serious but he also seemed to enjoy killing the kids you know like that was the, it wasn't just the joy of tormenting them it was the, the the idea of them actually getting to eat them was tantalizing to curry right whereas scars guard like i said it felt more throughout the all both films uh chapter one and two felt like he was a child like not really just just a, 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 an animal child right and stuff like that just kind of doing things right uh, 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 Heath Ledger's the Joker you know from the Dark Knight you know I'm a dog you know chasing cars I don't if I caught one I wouldn't know what to do with it you know I would just you know whatever right Pennywise feels like feels like that like he he knew that scaring the kids would make them taste better or make the adrenaline or whatever pour into the meat right and so he knew that that's what he had to do, right? But he didn't understand fear, you know? Whereas um, Curry's Pennywise always seemed to know exactly what he was doing. Does that make sense? Right? Somewhere in between the two? But yeah, that's, that's my thought. So I, I don't really have a, a pick which one I like best because the 1990s film, you know, it was 1990. So, you know what I mean? Like, there's only so much they could do for a TV movie and stuff like that, so obviously uh, it was a little bit more, you know, cheesy yeah. or whatever, that stuff, and this is obviously rated our film where they can push it and stuff, fangs and blood, and yeah, oh, I exactly. love when every time he ate any of the kids in this in this sequel, it was great, you know, Adrian Mellon, that was awesome, he tore a big chunk out, and he was like, you know, sucking it up, you know, fucking, and uh, uh, then eating the little girl's face, and then, um, and uh, the skater kid, skater kid yeah. right. I, although I would have loved to actually seen him eat yeah, the Seder kid, because uh, Pete, I, well, I, when I heard about it, like that that there there was going to be graphic child death in this film, I expected graphic mm -hmm. child death. Uh, compared to like I don't know Final Destination Four, where they dropped that glass plate and crushed Timmy. You know what I mean? I was like, none of these felt as violent. Like they just they felt a little. It, it didn't cut to black, but it might as well have. You know what I mean? Um, it was so quick cut. I mean, who knows? Like, uh, Mus Mus uh, Machete's planning on releasing uh, uncut versions of the film on, on Blu-ray and stuff as well as that supercut. Which um, brings me to my next point. Um, when it releases, it, or if he releases it, the, 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 the supercut, he plans on, uh, there, he said there was at least like uh, three or four scenes that he didn't get to film. Uh, and then there were scenes that he did film that they made him cut because the, the original uh, cut of chapter two was four hours long. So they made him cut it down to like whatever, three hours long, right? And um, so when he makes this super cut of one and two together on like some six, seven hour long film, you guys gonna see it? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. The, 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 the super cut of the film. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah? With all the uncut scenes and. 
I, I'm, I mean, it's probably probably going to be like a year or two out and stuff like that, but, uh, oh man, the, uh, there, I saw a complaint, uh, not complaint, but like a thing online where people said, well, the reason the studios made them do it is because, well, nobody's going to sit in the theater for a four hour long film. I'm like, you underestimate, it, it's, if it's a four hour boring film, of course, you know what I mean, like, uh, uh, the light, the love story of some World War II pilot and shit like that. You know, sometimes it's like, yeah, we get the point. You know, move on. But when you have seven characters with all unique things going on in this big open, this big world, it's it's no different than binge watching ten episodes of a TV show. People will do it in one day, right? <clears throat> so they they underestimate the, the that people would see a four hour long film. So I don't know. I, I personally six seven hour super cut of the film. I'd watch it on repeat. At least the first few times, just to, so I got sick of it, you know. But, um, so, also, Pennywise shows up in other Stephen King books, right? There's Insomnia, 11-22-63, uh, Dreamcatcher, right? Bob Gray shows up in G Dreamcatcher. Um, and then Dark Tower, and so on and so forth. Now, the Dark Tower movie that came out, whatever, a couple, uh, 2017 as well, right? Kind of bombed, and it was it's really bad. It's, I'm just going to put that out there. I thought it was terrible. I, I love the books, and they said it's kind of a semi-sequel to the books, but you know what? Screw that. The movie didn't get it. They didn't get what, what the Dark Tower is about, right? So, now HBO is um, playing with the idea of you know doing a like, Game of Thrones budget style version of the Dark Tower, like an actual long-running series, right, uh, with like seven or something seasons and shit. Would you want to see Skarsgård reprise the role of Pennywise if they put, if they have like a lead to Pennywise being in Midworld? Would you like to see him on like, on the HBO show, or would you like to see them just give a new actor a shot? I mean, he's a shapeshifter, so they wouldn't necessarily have to have the same person do it, but it would be nice to see the same person do it. It's always nice to see someone who has a role. Yeah. <laughs> you just chill. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you had to pick a different actor, though, who would you would you want to see? Give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. How about you? You know who I'd like to see? Jim Carrey. Yeah. <laughs> After seeing him in that show, Kidding, yeah. and he can play it. He can play really deranged people that somehow look happy but are definitely not happy yeah. and exactly <laughs> right he has that ability right to look like there's something not there mm -hmm. behind his face you know yeah. and I think that would be an, an interesting quality yeah. to see like him play if he played like Pennywise uh, uh, on the TV show and stuff like I mean it could it could it could be unnerving I mean kids you know um, I don't know how many kids nowadays know Jim Carrey. I mean, we grew up with Jim Carrey, right? But uh, and stuff like that. So for us to see something like that was like, oh my God! You know what I mean? It'd be like seeing, you know, it's like seeing Adam Sandler in an action movie or something like that. You're just, but that's Adam Sandler, you know. He does stupid shit like Abby Gilmore and stuff, you know. Why is he suddenly like James Bond, you know? Um, but sometimes he pulls it off, right? Like he's had some good ones, right? Rain Over Me and uh, Punch Drunk Love. So every given the opportunity, some actors can really surprise you, and that's why I think. If I could choose a new person, it would be Jim Carrey. Just to see what would happen. If, it would have, if he would have been younger, I would also say Jack Nicholson. Mm -hmm. Just to see how that would go. Because Jack Nicholson is also not all there. Yeah. Like, there is there's yeah, something funny. missing in that guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Alright, well, uh, any final thoughts? Anything you want to talk about? I'm going to bring up the ending in a second again, my theory. But uh, let's hear from everybody else now. First. Well, I think I talked about it. Okay, well, you're being really quiet. <laughs> That's nothing? No? How about you? I liked it. That's why I liked it. Well, my theory is he's not dead. The lights. They killed his physical form, and the lights went back. The, t the, the whatever portal between the macroverse and our universe closed. 
That's all they did. But he will, like, I, f I feel like if they wanted to make a third one, they can, like, you know, whatever years later and stuff like that, he finds a way back to yeah. reopen that I mean, portal. out of dairy. At the because it didn't look like the lights died. They just kind of faded, like they lost connection. Mm -hmm. you Maybe know. that's why they didn't have the town flooded at the end. Right. Because all, all, because it even looked like something got was it was all getting sucked into a vortex, right, and stuff like that. Like that, you know, Pennywise, the the the, the physical form was what was keeping the portal open. Like it's it's sticking your finger through uh, in the in a glass of water, right? You know, you're stopping the water from filling that. But as soon as you cut the finger off and it floats down, right, then the water and shit like that, and then there's nothing there, right? And I feel like that's at least in my my opinion, the, the ending, he's not dead. He's 100% could come back. Um, which would be cool. I mean, they have, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, on Hulu, they have a show called Castle Rock. Have you heard of it? It's uh, it's really good. Um, Bill Skarsgård's in it. Yeah, of all things. And uh, what it deals with is, uh, in, in Stephen King books, he has these things called thinnies. Thinnies are essentially thin spots in the fabric of our dimension, which is why all his books take place in in the in a same universe, right? But just different, like, mirror versions of, of the reality and stuff. So it's like one universe, you know, but they're like slides, right? So that's why some some things overlap and some things don't, you know? Why, why certain characters like uh, the priest from Salem's Lot shows up in, in Needful Things, you know? And stuff like that, um, but he doesn't remember know about the events of Salem's Lot because it's an alternate reality version of the priest, right? But all these dimensions are the same, and they're all connected by the Dark Tower, right? Which is what, uh, what holds it. Um, so in Castle Rock, the the main character, main characters, Bill Skarsgård, and I forgot what the other guy's name is, but they're both playing a guy named Henry Deaver. Right, one guy's Bill Skarsgård, white, and one guy's uh, I forgot. I said I forgot the guy's name, but he's black, right? They're both the same person, and they accidentally crossed over and ended up in each other's reality while uh, going through one of those thinnies, and then they got stuck in the opposite realities. Does everyone else in their universe realize they changed? Or they Just the their parents. Same? Okay. It's it's unnerving. I don't, I don't want to spoil it because if you guys want to see the show, it's it's really good. But there's like this longer mystery, and by do by being there and staying in those up other realities, um, it keeps the thinny open, and things from like the mist and stuff start coming into the worlds, both worlds, and stuff. And that's essentially Castle Rock. The show explains why the dark, all the stuff from Midworld, where the Dark Tower is, is happening in the actual Stephen King books. Why that shit actually got into our world and stuff like that. Why. Pennywise's asteroid was allowed to shoot a piece through because those two switch spots in the, in the thin spot. It's, it's, it's unnerving. But again, Bill Skarsgård does his creepy factor in there, but he's, you know, no, no clown makeup, but he's super gaunt, right? Like, I mean, he must have lost, down, he must weigh like 120 pounds in there. He's, he's not a short dude. He's like, he's like 5'10", 5'11", so he's really thin looking and stuff like that. Um, they've got some other phenomenal actors in there. Uh, do you remember John Locke from uh, Lost? He plays the the warden at Shawshank Prison, stuff like that. I mean, uh, Sissy Spacek, you know, who played Carrie in the original '70s movie. She plays Henry Deaver's mom. You know, so I mean, tons of King actors from previous movies are all in this show. And uh, oh, and there's and at the end of season one, they even allude that. Uh, that there will be Pennywise, and a lot of people thought that the show was going to connect to the Machete movies, but I don't think so, uh, just because Bill Skarsgård from both, I don't, I don't think that's going to be the case, but there is a, a missing poster for, for a kid. The name is not, you can't see the name because the water ripped off the thing, it looks a lot like Georgie. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> here we go. But um, now if you guys ever get a chance, it's on, it's on Hulu. Um, uh, I don't know when season two starts. Uh, eventually, uh, the show, the way they do it, 
is a lot like uh, those really bigger budget shows where it's like it could be two years before the next season comes out and stuff. It's not scheduled every year to come and everything. Um, but yeah. So, one last time. Anybody have anything else to say? No? Well, I'm glad everybody seemed to have at least enjoyed the film. Uh, you guys want to see it again sometime? Yeah. yeah. You? Possibly. I'm gonna have to find out which part was favorite. Next time we'll we'll do that. We'll do back to back. We'll, well, like I said, I'll probably get, end up getting a copy of the second one anyways, and then uh, we'll do them back to back. Watch them all the way. It's like one piece and stuff like that. Do that. I, I did that with uh, Infinity War and Endgame. After I got my hands on Endgame again, I watched it back to back. And Infinity Wars. Even though I loved Endgame, Infinity War is the superior film, yeah. so, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so, uh, you can say goodbye to the camera, everybody, we'll start with Andrew over there. See ya. So quaint. Alright, bye.